Hello, my name is Marcus with MLC CAD Systems, and let me show you how I'm going to document out some of the design of these parts for manufacturing. For this seat plate, this is going to be cut on a router, and we've had a lot of trouble with parts being countersunk on the wrong side, pockets being placed on the wrong side. It's a little bit of a complex part, so we're going to start using model-based definition. Because this has top and bottom features, notice these leader lines are visible no matter which side you're looking at to make it very clear what the dimensions are connecting to and what all is being called out. That's a new option for 2024 and you can turn that on or off depending on what you're trying to do. Additionally, for the router they wanted to have XY coordinates of all the various different holes so they could program it a little easier. Whole tables are now supported inside model-based definition. It works just like they do in drawings. Simply specify where you want your X and Y coordinates to dimension from. Specify where all the holes are located. In this case, I've got two faces here. And then I can go and drop my whole table out in the graphics area and decide which view I'd like it to be attached to. Now these values here, if you highlight a row in this table, it's going to cross highlight that row in the graphics area. So it makes it very clear and very easy to understand what's going on. If I save this out to a 3D PDF, that information will be displayed here in the 3D graphics view, as well as in any dedicated table areas. In this case, notice all the text here is selectable so that the programmer can very quickly grab all that data and feed it into their CAM solution to quickly program the location of all those holes. If instead I'd like to save this out to a 3D format, I can go into a step 242 export, and in that export setting I can export all of my custom properties to that file. They'll all be visible by the recipient, including all the annotations and the whole table. So it's quick and easy to understand what's going on regardless of what tool you are utilizing. I've got another part that I need to document, and in this part I need some of these dimensions to be dual dimensions. No problem, just double click and then click one more time to bring up this new editing dialog. I can do things like display it as a dual dimension, or modify the display in any other way, or add information around it as needed. For some of these parts, I'm going to create a dimension for some angles. Now this one is going to be uh, used to help again the programming of the CNC and when I go and add this dimension it gives me the true dimension of 90 degrees but what I'm looking for is that it's a 45 relative to the axis. That's okay. Show as half angle is a new option that allows me to very quickly show that as a half angle which is a much more intuitive value for the programmer and for the recipient of this design. I've got a dimension here that's the overall height of this part, but if I go and make a change, such as in this case I've got a split line that splits that top face, that creates a problem and causes one of these dimensions to dangle. New in 2024, we can edit this feature and simply select a new reference to very quickly reattach and continue working so that that annotation and exactly where it's set up in all my views is maintained and I don't have to kind of recalculate or reset it up uh, after that design change cross problems. Now this part right here is a round part that has some thicknesses I want to specify so I'm going to create a dimension for the thickness and we can do this just like you would in a drawing with a section view you can now create thicknesses between two cylindrical objects. Just more types of dimensions that are easy to display inside of model-based definition. So this part right here that we just did is part of a top tube assembly. It's involved in managing the bearing for the steering wheel and transferring that torque to the various steering components. But when I go to open that sub-assembly here from my breadcrumbs, you'll see that the geometry is kind of complicated. It's coming in at a really weird angle and it needs to be welded at that very specific angle with the various different components exactly where they need to be. The weld shop said that they thought that they could build a fixture to build that but it just was not working to the tolerances that we needed. So what I'm going to do is save this as a multi-body part. Tools, make multi-body part, 
is the same, almost the same as saving it as a part. So instead of it being an assembly, it's a multi-body part. But now you have a feature and it's going to automatically link back to the original. So instead of doing in-context modeling uh, that might create some rebuild or performance issues at the assembly level, I can export just the information I want from the assembly. It's parametrically linked and it's now in a multi-body part where I can very easily design the fixture that I need to weld this up. So the fixture design that I came up with is this one. And this is going to be printed either on a MarkForge printer with Onyx or we could put it on a Formlabs. But basically it's an assembled uh, fixture plate that has these various different parts on here. And on the end cap, we created these posts so the tubes could be inserted on the posts. And then they have internal uh, channels for airflow. And that's where we're going to put our purge gas for welding. Because this can be welded in either stainless or titanium. So by doing it this way, we're going to get uh, take a lot of the burden off the weld shop to set up something to connect and hold everything. And we're going to be able to create a really fantastic result uh, using this fixture, and it's not going to create any burden or overhead at the assembly level for rebuilds.